In this video, I want to have a look at musical instruments. I don't know whether you've got any uh, in your house. I'm not a musician. I love listening to music, but playing is another thing altogether. Uh, but there is a guitar, there are various other things around that other people in the family are more or less proficient at. And the thing I really want to try and cover today is uh, an important generic concept in physics called the principle of superposition, which applies to waves across the board, um, in the sea, in the pond, in the bath, um, and um, in musical instruments. Um, and look at what that does in terms of producing another interesting phenomenon uh, in the study of waves and vibrations, which is the standing wave. And the standing wave is something that is really important to uh, the production of, of sounds from musical instruments. So let's see where we go with this. Um, we're going to talk a little bit, as I said, about um, sound and particularly about something called standing waves. And we need first to cover a really basic principle in physics, uh, which is called superposi superposition, if I can say it myself. And superposition is relatively straightforward uh, in principle, but it actually governs a huge amount that goes on uh, in the physics of waves and vibrations, which is a lot of physics. So essentially, it says that if two waves pass through each other, then at any point, what you actually observe, the result, is just an addition of the two waves as they started. So let's imagine we've got one wave uh, here, and we're going to send another one through that same space at the same time. So I'm going to draw them separately, just so that we have a bit of character. Let's use another colour, which might help. So here's wave number two. And you'll notice I've drawn them uh, with the peaks vaguely lined up and the troughs vaguely lined up. Uh, in physics parlance, uh, we'd say uh, that these waves are in phase. I'm just doing that because it's going to illustrate the point, I hope, uh, relatively clearly. So let's move to a third colour now. Um, and we'll look at what we would get as a result of these two waves passing through the same bit of space at the same time. All we do remember uh, is at any one point um, we're going to add the amplitude of one to the amplitude of another, of the other. All right. So what we'd end up with, certainly with waves like this that are in phase, is that the peaks and the troughs will be higher and lower than they were to start with. Um, and that is the resultant wave that we would actually observe. OK, so if we change this around a little bit now, so let's change our um, second wave just to give you another example. Let's change our second wave so that it's now not in phase, but the opposite. So where we have a peak in the first one, uh, we're going to have a trough and vice versa. All right. And that is, surprise, surprise, termed as being out of phase. So no great surprises there. The principle of superposition says that what we'd actually observe, right, if we add these two things together in the same bit of space at the same time, so we're going to just go through and add up point for point 
wherever you choose to do it, um, to get our result. And our result now is that we've got a peak uh, of roughly the same size as um, this trough, but in the opposite direction. And the same is true all the way along here. So actually, what we'd observe would be nothing at all. It will be a wave with no amplitude. Um, and that's another uh, example of superposition in action. Now we could have done this with all sorts of points in between. And the result is obtained in exactly the same way. So wherever this wave was with respect to this wave, we would end up with uh, a final wave shape at the bottom that was just the result of adding point for point, point for point, point for point, all the way along. OK, so that's the principle of superposition. And um, as I say, that governs a lot of considerations in physics. So let's now look at where we go from that a little bit more in the context of, um, uh, of musical instruments. So if we're going to start thinking about musical instruments, I guess we need to um, we need to introduce our instrument. And the example I'm going to show you in a practical sense uh, later on is going to be the guitar. So here's my incredibly artistic rendition of a guitar. Um, and down here, of course, we've got a series of strings. with fixed points at the top and bottom. Right? We tune up there, we tune by changing the tension in the guitar string, uh, and it's got a fixed point at the bottom there as well. And then we pluck it somewhere in between, right? um, and alter the notes, of course, by pressing down at various points uh, on, the, uh, on frets above. But I'm only going to draw the one string because it would just get way too confusing. Uh, otherwise. But what we're going to do is to move now on from our principle of superposition to something called a standing wave. Uh, sometimes these are referred to as um, stationary waves. It's the same thing. But it follows on from our principle of superposition and the sort of ex examples I was showing you um, a little bit earlier. In that if we start this string vibrating, um, what happens, of course, is that if we pluck it, I don't know, let's say we're going to pluck it somewhere there, it will then vibrate backwards and forwards. All right. So we've got a vibration going on. And a wave will travel in this wire. The vibration will travel. It will go that way and it will go that way. But when it gets to either of these endpoints, these fixed endpoints, uh, it's going to be reflected. It's going to bounce back again. And that gives us an interesting um, situation. Because what we've essentially got uh, is a wave that's being bounced back from here and a wave that's being bounced back from here. And of course, they're going to have to travel through each other on this guitar string. And that's where our principle of superposition begins, begins to kick in. And the really cute thing uh, is that if we get it right, and by getting it right, I just mean we've got the tension in the string right and the length of the string right and so on. It's all part and parcel of, of musical instrument design. Uh, and use, then we have something really quite amazing happen. So here's our fixed points, so bridges, whatever, uh, and our guitar string running between them and then, you know, tied off at either end, uh, at one end, of course, to a, uh, a tuning system to change the tension. But nevertheless, we've got a wire stretch between two fixed points here. And we've got a, a pair of waves now, remember, uh, that are 
traveling as reflections back from these two endpoints and crossing through each other. And that will continue. They'll just go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards until uh, friction um, actually means that they'll, uh, they'll, they'll die away. Um, but that's not the bit we're going to think about. So if we get it right, as I say, what we'll end up with uh, is a condition whereby our final wave, I think we did that in, um, in red, didn't we, last time, so let's keep our colour scheme the same. Just by applying our principle of superposition to these two waves, uh, we end up with something um, where the wave looks as though the peaks and the troughs stay in the same place. They don't move in space. Uh, they'll change in the sense that the peak will become a trough. So at a later point in time, we'll actually have something like that. So these things are going to vibrate, ditto here. All right. But the actual position of this area where there's very little motion and this area where there's a lot of motion, um, in fact, technically there really should be no motion on these bits, um, is going to determine what we see on the string. All right. So for a standing wave where we've got this maximum um, change from peak to trough, uh, that's something that we referred to as an antinode. And surprise, surprise, this area where there is little or no motion on our guitar string, technically, as I say, it should be zero, um, is called a node. All right, and the position of the antinodes and the nodes on our guitar string um, will simply not move one way or another. So that's a standing wave, and that's actually common to um, all musical instruments. So the strings in a piano or a harpsichord or violin, whatever you uh, care to bring up, are all going to be exhibiting this sort of phenomena. And it, what's, it's what gives us the clarity and the, the richness of the sound uh, that comes off our strings. And actually it's even true um, in, a, uh, in a wind instrument. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that because me plucking a guitar string is one thing. Um, blowing through a recorder or whatever it is I can find lying around the house is quite another. Um, but it actually does apply to wind instruments as well. So here's the tube of whatever our instrument is. Um, and somehow we're going to set up a sound in here. It's either going to be through a reed or uh, across a, an opening, um, whatever it is. But that will set up um, sound, so therefore vibrations, not in a string in this case, but in the air, uh, in this tube, right? Um, and something a little bit weird and wacky happens in order to get uh, waves bouncing back so that we get this superposition and standing wave formation. Actually, what happens is that as our sound wave uh, travels up our tube, uh, it hits something, the outside air, in fact, that looks a little bit like it's a boundary of some sort. Not a perfect boundary, it's it's not like a, the fret on a guitar, um, but nevertheless it feels a bit like a boundary. So we actually get uh, another set of waves coming back down the tube again. They're much much weaker but nevertheless they are. And the principle of superposition is applying here also. So even with a winged instrument, we can get something comparable um, going on. And that's essentially what we're going to look at with the um, guitar demo. 
Um, and what I'm going to try and do for you is to pluck the guitar string and have you see the shape of uh, the standing wave um, that's formed in the string. OK, so remember our guitar string at rest is something like that. Uh, I'm going to pluck it and what we should see uh, set up uh, is a set of vibrations that will have a shape, an overall shape, that looks, if I can get this drawing right, something like that. So we'll see. Let's try it out. Now, my musical skills are such that I couldn't even tell you whether this guitar that I'm about to um, pluck is in tune or not. But all I really want to show is this vibration of sounds and the standing waves in the string. So let's just pluck one of the strings as it sits now. And you can see the string vibrating. And you can hear the sound. That's fine. But I'm going to try two more things now just to um, try and bring this effect out a little bit more. So the first thing I'm going to do is slide a piece of yellow card onto the bottom. And then I'm going to switch on the light in the room. Now the light happens to be an LED. And that has the great advantage for us that LED bulbs, or at least the um, economy ones, which this one certainly is, actually turn off and on um, 50 times a second. So they're actually acting like a strobe. And hopefully that's going to enable us to see the effect of the standing waves in these strings a lot more clearly. So I'll just strike the next one. It's my hope you can see the vibrations of the strings a lot clearer now. And that's a pretty good illustration of what I've been talking about uh, with, um, with standing waves and the sound that they produce in a musical instrument.